On October 19, 2014, astronomers around the world got the chance to see a very rare event, a comet called Siding Spring making a close approach to a planet in the inner solar system. Fortunately, it wasn't the Earth, but it was the planet Mars, and the distance of this encounter was frighteningly close, a distance of a little over 140,000 kilometers, or one-third of the distance from Earth to the Moon. Had this comet impacted Mars, the planet-wide consequences would have been utterly disastrous. Of course, fortunately, there are no humans on Mars. There may be other life, but no humans but had this object, had Siding Spring actually impacted the Earth instead, the consequences would have been utterly cataclysmic. Let me give you a quick rundown of just how bad this would have been. And again, this is a relatively small comet, only about 700 meters in diameter. So, as is often the case, we'll go ahead and pick the New York metropolitan area and go ahead and drop this comet at an enormous velocity, as you saw, over 100,000 miles an hour, 55 kilometers per second. Kaboom! The crater is utterly gigantic, 6.1 miles wide, almost 2,000 feet deep, and also the force of the explosion is 28 gigatons. That is the equivalent of a million Hiroshima bombs. A massive firestorm would consume all of New York, all of Long Island, 70% of Connecticut, most of Delaware, and a third of New York State, killing millions and causing a worldwide nuclear winter. And again, this is a relatively small comet. And the problem with comets of any size is the fact that we don't know they're there until they're entirely too close to stop. But interestingly enough, the Lucy probe, which recently got into the news by photographing an asteroid on its way to a group of asteroids called the Trojan Asteroids, could scout out a potential base in the outer solar system that could protect us from a cataclysm like this. How? Well, stay tuned and you'll find out right now. Good afternoon, space flight enthusiasts, and welcome to another Angry Bulletin. Of all the potential dangers to our planet and to our civilization, none are more dangerous potentially disastrous than a cometary impact. In many ways, a comet impact would be far more devastating than an asteroid impact. Why is that? Well, it's because comets travel through the solar system at a much faster velocity than asteroids do, averaging somewhere in the vicinity of 50 to 55 kilometers per second, as opposed to the mid-20s or so for asteroids. And of course, the faster a large object Object is going when it impacts a planet, the more devastating the explosion. If a comet, for example, the size of Halley's Comet, were to impact the Earth, the consequences would be significantly more devastating than even the asteroid impact that wiped out the dinosaurs. And it has been suspected that fragments of Halley's Comet may have caused tremendous climactic events in the history of our civilization. So even though asteroids, as far as percentages are concerned, and far as the likelihood of an impact is concerned, even though asteroids do represent a greater threat than comets do, when we're talking about an event that could potentially annihilate the human species and completely destroy our civilization... A cometary impact is among the worst, among the most threatening. And of course, one of the most serious things about comets is the fact that they come into the solar system from such an enormous distance. There are comets that orbit our sun, sometimes with periods as long as several centuries, sometimes several millennia. So many of those comets out there, we have no idea that they're coming towards the sun, coming towards the inner solar system until we finally catch sight of them. And oftentimes we are catching sight of them when they are within the realm of the Jovian worlds, Saturn, Jupiter, or sometimes even closer than that. 
And that's what a base further out in the solar system could do for us and for our civilization. And not only for earth but also for any bases that we establish anywhere else because the moon mars as you saw in the introduction the siding springs comet came quite close to mars any colony that we establish anywhere in the solar system especially in the inner solar system could potentially be threatened by these sorts of objects objects we have no idea are out there until it's too late but if we get an earlier warning from a base located further out in the solar system. And also, if this base were equipped with the necessary impactors or some other type of asteroid deflecting device, if they were to have this, then a comet that would be impossible to stop with an Earth-bound interceptor might very well be deflected by a missile launched from a base located within this outer solar system region. And the most ideal location, according to a study from Harvard University, is in the Trojan asteroids. Jupiter is an enormous planet. It's so big that it could actually consume every other planet in the solar system and still have room to spare. And its gravity is correspondingly huge, with an enormous number of natural satellites, but also something else. Both following and advancing in front of the planet are two groups of small bodies known as the Trojan asteroids. These remnants of our early solar Solar system are trapped on stable orbits associated with, but not all that close to Jupiter. They are instead located in what are called Lagrange points, essentially solar system parking lots where the gravity of Jupiter and the gravity of the Sun cancel one another out, and anything that ends up in these parking lots tends to stay put for billions of years. And so NASA decided that it was time to explore these unique objects, and they sent out a probe a little over three years ago called the Lucy. United Launch Alliance launched the Lucy probe in 2021, and over the course of its 12-year mission, Lucy will explore a record-breaking number of asteroids. We'll fly by three of them in the main asteroid belt that circled the Sun between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. By the way, it's already passed two of those asteroids, and then it will explore eight Trojan asteroids, which includes five targets and the satellites of three of those targets. Lucy will also fly by Earth three times to get a push from its gravity, making it the first spacecraft to return to the vicinity of the Earth from the outer solar system. Lucy is named for a fossilized skeleton of a human ancestor, which was named for the Beatles song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Now, Lucy has already encountered the asteroid Dinkanesh on November 1st of 2023, and then just two days ago, as you might have heard, it passed by the asteroid Donald Johansson and got some very, very detailed photographs. Again, this is our first clear look at this asteroid. All of the telescopes in the world don't have the necessary resolution to get an image like this. And in a couple of years, on August 12, 2027, Lucy will begin to explore the Trojans, starting off with the asteroid Eurybates and its satellite Keta, followed by an asteroid called Palamali and an unnamed satellite, followed by an asteroid called Lucas in 2028, then an asteroid called Oris on November 11th of 2028, and finally an asteroid known as Patroclus and its satellite Menetius. And by the way, it is these two asteroids that I am the most interested in, and so were the Harvard researchers. But let's go ahead and talk about these asteroids real quick and find out why they're so important. For one thing, as you can see from this particular footage, it appears that there's quite a lot of water ice in the Trojan asteroids. One of these asteroids is actually behaving a bit more like a comet than an asteroid with a cometary tail. That's quite an amazing thing. And again, if the Trojan 
asteroids are indeed rich in ice, that means that they're natural refueling stations. You can utilize this ice not only for drinking water, but also for breathable oxygen and rocket fuel. And given the fact that other asteroids are carbon rich, you could theoretically use the carbon and the ice to produce methyl ox fuel for Starship. But Lucy is going to venture into some unknown territory as well, because five of the asteroids that it's going to be encountering are either D-type or P-type asteroids. These asteroids have low albedos, meaning that they're not very bright, and relatively featureless spectra with a very steep red slope spectra. And scientists hypothesize that these are rich in organics and volatile elements, but we're not really sure, because we have only one meteorite in our collection that's a promising match for a D-type asteroid. This is called the Tagish Lake Meteorite, but we don't know if this one meteorite is representative of all D-type asteroids, so we really don't know much about them. And then P-type asteroids, which by the way includes that patroclus Menetius binary that I was talking about before, we know virtually nothing about these asteroids, aside from the fact fact that they have low albedos like D-types, so scientists think that they're rich in organics and volatile elements, but since we have no meteorite from a P-type asteroid, we don't know at all. So that being the case, a lot of new information is going to be uncovered by Lucy, but what about a base? Why would a base be so useful? Well, this is where that Harvard study comes in. And by the way, this is that Patroclus Menetius asteroid pair that I was talking about earlier. Now, why is a base in this area so useful anyway? I mean, for one thing, as I've mentioned before, a base at this location will be able to spot incoming comets a lot earlier. And so this Harvard paper recommends that an optical telescope be sent out after Lucy to an appropriate asteroid to observe any potentially dangerous objects, but alternatively, the Trojans could be used to host a permanent space base for missiles capable of deflecting the trajectory of dangerous objects when they are so far away from the sun that their sun-centric speed is low. The deflecting missile performance would therefore be fully optimized, increasing the chance of success of a dangerous object's deflection mission. What does that mean? Well, as filmmakers often say, show, don't tell. Now look at the relative velocity of this comet as it's approaching the inner solar system. It's going fast, but not as fast as it will once it gets to the very inner solar system. Once it passes by Earth, and especially once it loops around the sun, look at the velocity that this comet achieves. The closer it gets to the sun, the faster it goes. Therefore, the best time to intercept and deflect a comet is when its sun-centric speed is at its lowest, in other words, when it's further away from the sun, and the Trojan asteroids are a perfect location for such an interception to take place, whereas an interception being dispatched from Earth or even from Mars is going to be a lot less optimal. By the time that mission finally reaches the comet, its velocity is going to be so high that its trajectory will be very, very difficult to change. And if it's a very large comet, like say Halley's Comet, it will be virtually impossible to change its trajectory, even with nuclear weapons. But why would Patroclus be so useful? Well, it's a fascinating binary for one thing. Both of these asteroids are over 100 kilometers in diameter, they're roughly the same size, and they orbit one another at a distance of just over 600 kilometers. They would be utterly gigantic in each other's night sky for one thing. But also, you could tether the two asteroids together with a space elevator, allowing, first of all, for easy transit between the two, but also if you could increase their velocity slightly, you could create natural artificial gravity via centrifugal force between the two asteroids. Another alternative would be to have a spinning base, spinning like a top that is, exactly between the two asteroids connected by the space elevator 
elevator to both bodies. Of course, the spinning effect still generating centrifugal force and artificial gravity, and the base would be able to harvest resources from both asteroids. In addition, it would be an ideal location to harvest the resources of the rest of the Trojans, and this could be all types of different rare earths, rare metals, and of course, water, ice, and carbon for fuel, breathable oxygen, and of course, drinking water. And finally, the centrifugal force generated by both of these asteroids could be ideal for the missile deployment. If these missiles had natural delta V being provided by this centrifugal force, it would require even less fuel to carry out a cometary interception or perhaps even an asteroid interception at an appropriate distance. Keep in mind that many near-Earth asteroids also orbit well past the orbit of Mars and fairly close to these Trojan asteroids. So this base would serve so many different critical purposes, not only for our future expansion out into the solar system, but also for protecting our civilization from dangerous objects that could quite literally render the human species extinct. And as we continue to expand into the solar system, it could also defend planets like Mars or the moon or other future human colonies from the same time types of objects. The Trojan asteroids, therefore, could prove to be a sentinel guarding the inner solar system from a cataclysm. And although NASA isn't talking about it right now, the Lucy mission could be the first reconnaissance effort to establishing this type of sentinel base before the end of the 21st century. And by the way, even though this is supposedly the surface of Patroclus, we have no idea what it actually looks like. And I can't wait to see what Lucy shows us between now and 2032. Oftentimes on this channel, I like to talk about innovative thinking, thinking outside the box, coming up with unique and inventive ways of solving problems. And when I found this Harvard University study, I was quite fascinated. I thought it was such an intriguing idea. And as you hope you saw from the video, there are many, many advantages to putting a base in the Trojan asteroids that a lot of people probably haven't even thought about. From providing a refueling station for spacecraft heading out into the outer solar system because of the abundant water ice that we think are in the Trojan asteroids to the potential of deflecting a dangerous and possibly civilization ending comet on its way into the inner solar system a base in the Trojan asteroids could serve many many useful purposes it could certainly generate a profit based on the resources available in the asteroids and as again as you saw from the video there are many locations that would prove not only convenient, but also could generate their own artificial gravity, keeping the inhabitants from experiencing at least the worst of the rigors of bone loss and muscle mass loss. The sorts of things that happen in microgravity might be avoided on a base in the Trojan asteroids. Again, I've find these sorts of studies fascinating. I love to bring you these details. If you enjoy it too, if you have your own thoughts about this video, of course, please put it in the comments. Also, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon and PayPal. I am less than two weeks away from departing to Washington, D.C. to go to the National Archives to uh, get some access to some CIA UFO footage. Can't wait to see all of that. And again, it's because of you that these sorts of things are happening. It is your support that makes this unique content possible. So thanks again. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, stay angry about space.